People will perceive me in a way that's not highly regarded. People will perceive me in a way that means that I will be less. If I express anger, that's not a nice thing to do. If I express sadness, I'm weak, so I don't want to do that. If I express joy for the simpleness of life, then I'm immature. You never will win. You will always be in battle with everything you do. Do you see how every emotion now has a battle against what people think? Caring what people think is simply a sign to become more conscious of who you are. When we think about fear of judgment, we start to think about many different things. I don't want this person to think this about me. I care if they perceive me in this way. Do I look like this? Because I'm supposed to look like this. Fear of judgment is so strong simply because everybody is underneath it. We've seen very small amount of role models through time that can truly show us that you can live fully without the care of what others think. So today I'm going to shine light for you on taking note of the time where you feel the most fear of judgment and how to allow yourself to become conscious of who you are because that's simply what's happening. It's just a not noticing of the consciousness that you are or the freedom that you are. Let's talk about expression. When you find yourself in a situation where you want to express something, anger, sadness, joy. Let's just go with these three. Anger. Let's say you're in a situation, much like me, like I used to be, you're in a situation and you find yourself feeling very angry about something. Maybe somebody does something that you didn't want them to do. Maybe they express something that you feel like, I told you to stop, to stop doing that. Maybe they piss you off in a way where you feel like, I just need to let them know. There's a few things that happen when someone cares what others think of them. Firstly, if you're in that situation and you feel like that person is, has done something that you didn't want them to do, the first thing that could come to you is, should I express this or should I not express this? And simply because you know that to just let go and say something, you can be viewed as a person who's violent or a person who's an angry person or a person who is not a good person. So you allow yourself to think about it. <clears throat> and maybe you shun it off. You go, all right, well, he, he did it. I didn't want him to do it, but I don't want him to do it again. Then the situation shows up again and he does the same thing. Then you feel like, okay, now I have to say something, but if I say it like this, maybe I'm coming across too bad. If I say it like this, maybe I'm coming across too mean. Maybe I should pull it back a little bit. Maybe I should just tell him in a way that's a little bit nicer. Then you hold it off a bit. Then let's say it happens again. This time you just go, all right, I told him I'm gonna say it like this, and then you do it. Now, 
the expression itself has went through so many filters that when it comes out to that person, it won't be clear. This is the thing about it. When you want to express something, let's say anger, when you feel yourself wanting to express something very intensely like anger, you will notice that you take it through many filters before it actually becomes expressed. And all of that is simply because you are afraid of what this person may think of you. You are afraid that you may come across in a way that's other than some way that they perceive you. You say it, you feel like you have done something good because you've maintained your image by it. You say it, and then let's say it happens again. This time, you blow up. And in the blowing up, you feel justified. But based on their reaction, based on what they tell you, oh, this doesn't seem like you, oh, this is not really you, you feel like, fuck, man, that wasn't me. And then you do everything you can to maintain the image back. I used to do this same thing. I would feel like I want to express something. And especially with the family members. I feel like I want to express something. Then I would block it. Then I would take it through a filter, block it again, take it through a filter, block it again, take it through a filter. By the time it comes out, it's not really true to me. It doesn't feel natural to my way. It feels very contrived and rigged, and it is. I did so much to it, now when it comes out, it comes out as a form of anger. It doesn't come out as anger, it comes out as a form of anger. An image of what anger is. An image of anger that I feel that it could be more acceptable. All because I just didn't want to come across like I was a mean person because I highly regarded myself as someone who wasn't mean. Someone who understood someone who was nice, someone who had a good heart, something I used to say to myself. And then allowing myself to be these images, I noticed that I had so much anger blocked in myself. I had issues expressing anger. Much like someone, if you've been watching my video for some time, you probably have some issues expressing anger. The last student I was with, the student before that, the student before that, I could see my old self in them. I could see how they highly regarded themselves so much as a good person that they weren't willing to express the quote unquote dark side of life. They weren't willing to express anger and frustration and intensity of any kind. They weren't willing to do it. It's because they cared so much what others thought of them. That's the only thing we came to. And one of the things that they struggle with when they come to me is, yeah, I want to do this, man, but I really feel like I just care what people think of me. That's always their thing. And I'm like, I absolutely know what that feels like. I absolutely fucking know. I take them into intensity so they understand that that anger that's blocked in them, that energy block of like intensity of, of feeling, that needs to come out. They're not only this gentle, warm person, they're also a very intense person. A person who can go to the in intensity extreme of really feeling like you are a cutting machine. They're really feeling like you can cut through something with who you are, with what you say. And let's talk about sadness. If there's one thing that not just you, but everybody really struggles with truly is expressing sadness. 
they really care what others think of them. Not their friends. I'm not talking about them around their friends. I'm not talking about them around somebody of comfort. I'm talking about expressing sadness. I mean, allowing sadness to be shown through them. It looks like a weak position. When you really look at it, when, when, when someone sees someone else in sadness, they have sympathy for them because they see them in a position of weakness. They perceive it as weakness, so they have sympathy for them. So you feeling like, I don't want anybody to have sympathy for me or I don't like expressing my feelings because uh, people may think that I'm weak, which is one of the things I absolutely used to do as well because I'm no white angel in any of this. Sadness then becomes something that you really don't want to show. One of the things that I really enjoy is when I'm with a student and he is showing me some sort of feeling. Whether it be hurt and then transfers into sadness, whether it be anger, it doesn't matter. I really enjoy that time simply because I know that he now is becoming natural. He's now becoming human. He's now becoming a person. He's now becoming a being, a human being. He's now becoming that. Because when we look at something like sadness, we go, okay, it's only in the position of less than everyone else. So I don't want to ever be there. I only want to be perceived as strong because weakness seems like it's not strong. Then you start to build <clears throat> an exterior. And that exterior is, I'm strong. I'm unfazed. Things don't hurt me. Then as you walk around with that, you become blocked off to your feeling. And then you become blocked off to your feeling. Then you become blocked off to your feeling. You walk around and maybe you feel at some point, because now you're on a spiritual journey, the journey of, the journey of self-development, you feel at some point, man, I've just taken a lot. Maybe you realize something and you feel sadness. But there's a part of you that doesn't want to express it. There's a part of you that feels like it's weak. So as you walk around throughout the day, you'll hold on to it. You'll interact at work, you'll hold on to it. You'll go all the way through the day holding on to it to eventually you get alone and then you'll allow yourself to feel. A friend of mine, he came up to me and I just said, man, you don't look like you're something. I forgot what I said. You don't look like you're something. It was something in, a, in the sense of he didn't look like he was upbeat. He didn't look like he was happy. That's what it is. He didn't look like he was of joy. He didn't. Then he was just like, no, I'm not. And of course I knew it. I didn't have to say that, but I just expressed it. And he said, no, I'm not. And he said, when I'm walking around throughout the day and I just stop totally, actually sadness is there. And me knowing how much people block it, I was like, yes, of course it is. Because when you actually settle into the moment, when you settle any moment, the most truest feeling will arise to the surface. Why do you think everybody is so afraid to really just settle in life? They're afraid to just settle down. Because the moment they settle down, the feeling 
becomes strong. The moment they quiet themselves on the inside, the moment they just stop and don't move, they notice actually that a lot of sadness comes up. If I say there's one thing that people really, really block off a lot, I would say is sadness. This is why nobody stops. This is why everybody drinks. This is why people want to smoke. They do all this to block the sadness. It's a searing level inside of them that wants to be expressed through them, that wants to be settled into, but they do whatever they can to move away from it. <clears throat> because they've been hurt by things and then they go, I don't want to do this. I don't want to settle. Because settling into it means that they've given in to the weakness. As people, we don't like to give in to the weakness, whatever we perceive to be weak. We don't like to give in to it. Because then we have to pronounce ourselves as weak. We will not express sadness simply because people will think that it is that. It's not a strong position and we do whatever we can to stay in the strong position. Now we can talk about joy. We also don't express joy. You may be somebody who's like, I find myself having fun when there's something to have fun about, but I also find myself not having fun when there's something not to have fun about. You block yourself to actually experiencing joy. You block yourself. Maybe you're out in the day and you feel like doing something. Maybe you feel like expressing something being a certain way. Maybe you feel like this. You feel like in the moment there's some joy that comes through you. There is a way where you want to skip, that you want to be, that you want to play. But wouldn't it be weird though, as a 35 year old man to just skip? Wouldn't it be weird as a 30 year old man to laughing away where everybody knows that you're laughing? Wouldn't it be weird as a guy in his late 20s, a guy in his mid 20s, to express joy through himself by doing something very simple. In many ways, if you're not doing something extravagant and you try to express joy, I mean, bodily express joy you look like an idiot. You look like you're someone immature. The way that we pronounce joy is only in relation to extravagant things, extravagant events. Maybe you go to the amusement park. Maybe you're hanging out with your friends and you all, all you guys are playing Frisbee. Maybe you're doing something where you're in the hills and you're going cliff diving. Joy is only seen to be expressed in the moments of extravagance. This is why we miss joy and the simpleness of life. Because we go, the simpleness of life is boring. Being simply yourself is boring. This is why nobody really wants to express joy. This is why no one finds themselves feeling just the music that, that they're listening to. Feeling like, fuck, I wanna move like this. Nobody finds themselves doing that because they will look like an idiot to others. 
or they go into the other side of adverse reaction when it comes to joy, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. They try to now prove that they like the simple things, so they start trying to you know, dance down the street and do all these things to prove that they like the simpleness of life. It's not seen as mature, as likable, as something highly regarded to express joy in this way. Our unconscious reaction to all three of these, of course there's other emotions, but our unconscious reaction to my three examples is people will perceive me in a way that's not highly regarded. People will perceive me in a way that means that I will be less. If I express anger, that's not a nice thing to do. I'm the crazy person now. If I express sadness, I'm weak, so I don't want to do that. If I express joy for the simpleness of life, then I'm immature. You never will win. You will always be in battle with everything you do. Do you see how every emotion now has a battle against what people think? Hurt has a battle. Frustration has a battle. Gentleness has a battle. Sweetness has a battle. Everything has a battle because there's always going to be a person who sees it not like you want them to see it. There's always going to be a person who perceives it to not be something highly regarded. You start to look around with the attitude of, why have I just been letting this control me so much? Why have I always been under people's good opinion? Why do what they think of me mean so much to me? And as you look at it and you start looking at it from all different angles, what you'll start to notice is that anger and frustration arises. You feel like everybody is out there and they're caring what I do. They're caring how I live my life. They're caring how I am. They're caring how I express myself. Then you start to go, you know what? Fuck what people think of me. Really, fuck what people think of me. And you start trying to go out and live life in a way where you're like, you know what? I'm going to do social freedom. You know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to live in a way where if people think about me in this way, you know what? That's just what they think. You start to build this versus attitude. Me versus them. Because you're already perceiving them that I'm battling them, so it's you versus them. And this is what I want you to be aware of in this process, is this part. You wanting to go prove yourself. Go prove that you don't care what people think. Because this is not actually not caring. This is proving now. You will find that you can live life in a different way, but you're still in the same prison. You are. Be aware that you will start proving yourself because the proving is a reaction to, I don't want to care what people think anymore. The proving comes after that. Become conscious of this. Who you are is not a proving person. Who you are is beyond proving. So the only thing you can do with any of this is just notice what's happening when you care what do people think. 
just notice. This is why I talk so much about meditation. Because you won't be able to notice with clarity. You won't be able to notice unless you're able to be aware. If you say it to yourself, today, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna notice the times where I feel like I care what people think of me. Let's say you never did meditation. You will get those times, but you will have a reaction to it that will take you into proving. That's the difference. If you don't know meditation, you will start trying to prove. If you don't know clear space, you will start trying to prove. So the only thing literally that you can do is allow yourself to empty out so you can be aware of these times. As you start to notice what people think of you, just simply let it be there. Start to take note of what do you do in the times where you notice what people think of you. What do you do? How does your body react? Because that means something specific to you. If there's something that I teach a guy when he sees me at a seminar, or on Skype coaching, or in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I tell him specifically about why his body reacts like this to fear of judgment. Then he starts to see like, wow, this is what's been happening. It's just that I'm just afraid of this because it goes far beyond fear of judgment. It does. This is, why, this is why noticing what happens is so important. Because as it goes far beyond that, you'll be able to access the root. The root isn't, I care what people think of me. The root is something else. This is why I'm so happy that I've been able to at least clear up some of that feeling of, I care what people think. Because now you're starting to see that. Literally, if you don't become conscious, you will always remain an unconscious reaction. That's the choice you have. The choice you have with this is to become conscious of who you are. Because if you become conscious, you start to understand that I really don't care what people think of me. I actually don't. I was just ignorant to who I am. I was ignorant to the fact that I am beyond that. That who I am is beyond judgment. That I'm total freedom. But to get to this place, it requires the noticing. Let this give you more insight into this. I'm not gonna give you the drills, the meditations for that, that will be something you have to come see me in person for or do coaching for. But this can at least give you clarity on how to go forward. I have spots left in my London seminar. So if you feel like you want to get your questions answered about who you are and how can you be more of that, this is for you. Below in the description box, you'll find a link that will take you there and give you information on the seminar and the tickets. If you want to know more about coaching, Skype coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, beneath that, I'll have my email there. Tony Solo at theessenceofmen.com, one word. It'll be below. You can copy and paste that and write me. Otherwise, subscribe and share this with anybody who you feel wants to hear this. It's more important to be that which you are than to try to become that which you want. So never try, simply be. I'll talk to you in a few days.